Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the return of the John Brown Isekai. Woo! I, I thought we were only doing this for the thousand subscribers, which I thought was never going to get released. And, well, it did get released, and thank you for that. Thank you for subscribing. And now in high demand by a few viewers, and mainly my co-host tonight, in Hello. high demand, we are going to be continuing. This is going to be a regular series now in Redout Productions. Uh, you're welcome, and I am apo I apologize at the same time. There's, there's no need to apologize. So, this is great. While I try to get logged in to the Wi-Fi, our co-hosts are going to take over. Let them introduce yourselves. Right, so this is a, a Humble Collector, a.k.a. Connor, and we are joined tonight by my sibling, Jess. Hey! She is familiar with anime and fan fiction, so... I dabble. Yeah, she dabbles. So <laughs> we're uh, we're in a pretty good good company here. Yes, sir. We are actually surprisingly sober for this reading. Um, we were out in York, PA for the Mac show uh, today. We just got back. We're very tired. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we've been talking about doing Chapter 3 for a while. And interestingly enough, the um, actual uh, author of the John Brown Iskai, the Cabbage Preacher, um, they actually saw the videos. They commented on them, which was really cool. And... Um, I don't know, uh, read out if you want to go over those together or if you want to... Oh, yeah. So, uh, thank you, Cabbage Preacher, for finding this wonderful video of us. And, again, apologize for all of our... Uh, how we butcher pronunciation, things like that. But, anyways, the Cabbage Preacher was very kind to reach out and actually gave her own thoughts through the first two episodes, for the first few chapters. And you can actually check that in the comment section. Uh, Connor, you want to pull up and go through some of the highlights? Yeah. Yes, first thing, um, we had made a mention in the first video that we thought that uh, the Cabbage Preacher was a reference to, of course, the Cabbage Vendor from The Last Airbender. Uh, that is not true. That's apparently a callback to her RuneScape name uh, when they added Cabbage Picking as a skill to the game as a joke, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, she did make the cover herself, and it was actually the first thing she did in the ESC, which is pretty cool. Um... So she finished the entire, it's a very, it's a short story right now, and she finished it in three days, which is crazy, the amount of work that went into that. Um, the cave drawing that was referenced in there uh, was pulled from wiki comments, so nothing specific to the story, and she did confirm that is um, I Am Mighty on the title, or on the um, cover photo there, and then going to the second video here. Um, so she did know, she didn't really have time to build a magic system since, you know, this guy was made on a whim, very short form. Uh, that's something she wanted to expand more on in the future. Uh, she did confirm Shield Hero also was one of the works that inspired the Isakai, which is not surprising. In fact, there's a new artwork by the author on the p fiction page and it features, uh, at least I assume it features the protagonist of Shield Hero. Uh, yeah, which is pretty funny. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, so uh, she noted that, um, she kind of assumed that uh, John Brown stopped using his rifle by chapter two in the story because he ran out of ammo. Um, she, she admits that's something maybe she didn't think through much at the time, which sorely regrets. She does also mention here that maybe in the, um, the future expanded version of the work that we'll see more black powder uh, fantasy, which is something that we're both very excited about. Pew. Do like good uh, uh, black powder fantasy. Probably one of the most exciting things is, is um, Redout had mentioned is that Jackson was in in presence when um, John Brown was executed. At, yes, our... Tom, uh, Thomas Stonewall Jackson. Yeah, so Stonewall uh, apparently was originally planned to be a villain in the series, with him being reincarnated as a geomancer who had the ability to create walls of earth, which is just really fucking dope. Because you could have had a line like "There stands Jackson casting stone walls," you know, like that's just really cool. <laughs> Um, so he might return in the, the, the expanded version. I'm very cool. much hoping. I really hope so. I hope that line's in there. Um, see, so she did mention that, um, time is walking between two worlds, because we'd, um, we'd hypothesize, like, is everybody's being isekai from, like, the 1800s, or they're from all over? And apparently when John Brown is duking it out with the slave owner of the plantation, the slave owner calls John Brown a commie bastard, which obviously... Calling anybody a commie bastard would imply that he's from, you know, at least the 20th century. Uh, which we completely missed, because admittedly we were very plastered at that point. Um, so apologies that we missed that detail, but that, that answered our question for us. Um, Try to think here. Oh yeah, so that that's really like all the big stuff I think here. Um, she is planning on rewriting the John Brownist guy to be more like a novel length release, which could be awesome. Uh, it's going to get to expand on a lot of stuff, and I, I think that's something we're going to have to check out in the future as well. And I think that's all the 
the that, big comments that's, there. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for the comments. And yeah. uh, we hope that you keep them up as we keep going through this series. So Jessica, have any other comments? Uh, what's your background with John Brown? <laughs> um, I don't really know anything about John Brown. I'm not a history person, but I watched the other two videos. So, so what's your background with anime? Oh, like 10 years of... O OG so right much. Yeah. I'm an og -er. <laughs> Then you are better prepared than our audience right now. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, most of, most of Spencer and I's audience are on the older side. Mm. So... Oh, and we've also taken a vote because we are com we are totally complete evil sexists. Uh, yes, we totally are. That since there is a main female character, you have to read her lines. Oh, oh we're the that first I'd heard this. But... Yes, yeah. <laughs> this first. Oh, great. So I'm the douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I get to deflect blame to you because I wasn't involved. I mean, we, so we might actually start like getting concrete roles for the series. Is what I'm saying. Maybe, maybe each episode we'll just keep bringing more people in. I, so, I think I've come to the well. In that case, you need to be drawn around. Crap. Yeah, he uh -oh. gets to be John Brown, which means I get to be everybody alert. else. Yeah. <laughs> that sounded great in your head, didn't it? It did, and now I'm kind of like regretting it just a little bit. No, this is Craig. What are we talking about? Oh, all right, cool. All right. I Without further ado, because historically these ramblings go on for half the video. They do. And we have time for that afterwards. I'm not saying we're not. We are going to begin with chapter 3, which begins with the title, Ye Soldiers of Freedom, Then Strike While Strike Ye May. Let's scroll down here a little bit. All persons known to be of good character and a sound mind of suitable age who are connected with the organization, whether male or female, shall be encouraged to carry arms openly. Another article from the Provisional Constitution of Ordinances prepared by John Brown. So quick reminder for the viewers and to Jessica, uh, John Brown did set up a constitution for his new provisional government once he took the, once he took the arms out of the Harper's Ferry arsenal and gave them out to the free slaves. He had a whole constitution and everything. What a madman. All right. So we have a very nice photo here of the guard chambers at Hampton Court as kind of a reference for the uh, where the next scene is taking place, which is pretty cool. Looks like a very fancy room. Duke Robert of Nordogalian. Nordogal. Uh, yeah, this is great. Nordogalian? Thank you. Nordogalian. Thank you. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, you're allowed to swear on this. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Yeah, did you know? I meant, to, I meant to ask, but then it just slips out. Yeah, no, you're good. Yeah, you're good. I, th th this is for fun. <laughs> Had gathered his vassals for a regular meeting in a gaudily decorated hall of the Ducal Palace. The room was filled with get-ups that were equally as gaudy as the room they were in. The atmosphere in the room was the tensest it had been since a dragon had ravaged the Duke's lands. My lord, we have a grave situation in our hands began one of the petty lords seated at the round table. Adventures have been reported an unusual number of dead bodies on the road for the last month. In addition, a knight of mine was murdered in cold blood and had their estate burned down by unknown attackers. So, are you not just voicing John Brown? Or are we not doing that? Oh, yes. I'm no, though, that's jo that is your... No, you try to make John Brown Southerner. Oh, so I get to be John Brown? No, no, I'm John Brown. What the... What's going on? No, this isn't John Brown. This is just a random... Right, so I thought I was... I, I wasn't trying now. to voice. this. Oh, I'm just reading. <laughs> oh, okay. I, 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 thought, I figured I'd just plunge right in. So I'm going to keep plunging right in. But <laughs> Fair enough. Next, next quote. Uh, get ready. But mm -hmm. Finish that rum. The rest of the lords reported similar events, sharing stories of dead adventures, nights, and burnt down estates. My lord, these events are clearly too frequent and organized to be the just a coincidence, said a count with a concerned expression. There must be some sort of organization behind this, one that we must unite and take immediate action against. A rich lord from a port on the fringes of the du duchy began talking. If you're looking at organized thugs, then it's definitely the work of the Anti-Adventurers League. We've captured a few of their men operating in my city. <laughs> yes. Maybe they've gone to direct action. Yes. <laughs> the Duke had been silent for some time, listening to the bickering of his vassals. He finally decided to break his silence after having listened to each vassal. Do any of you know where these thugs are based at? The lords became silent. Then I do not have the time or budget to make my men chase around a ghost. 
It is my duty to protect you as your liege, yes. But it's not my duty to deal with some simple bandits that you cannot catch. So, we're going to assume this guy is just sitting there, um, um, like, uh, Sinji's father. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, that's exactly a <laughs> picture of, like, Gendo. He's just sitting there with yeah, his hands in front of his face. The name, yeah, there, there's that name. <laughs> I also like how he's like, yes, my job is to protect you, but, like, I don't have time for this, so just... Crap, that means I have to edit in a photo of Gendo. Crap. Oh, no. You gotta edit in the gif of him, like, smiling. <laughs> that, that's like... <laughs> the is there one of him no. loving Shinji? Oh, there's none. <laughs> there is none. There is none. There is none. Mm -hmm. The room was plunged into chaos as the lords tried to find a solution. Then we should send someone from the Adventurer's Guild. No, get your own troops to deal with it. Isn't it the job of the liege? We should find where they live before we act. The bickering continued for another hour, yet nobody could agree on a course of action. Oh gosh, that's every meeting at work. <laughs> <laughs> it had been two months since Brown's first big raid on an estate. The area around the headquarters, which began as a simple cave, had grown into a small town with around a thousand liberated slaves. That's not a small town, sir. The area was dotted with makeshift shacks, though some of those who were more skilled in construction began making huts of adobe and straw. Yes, like falling water, right? So I would like to point out that even though John Brown is not your typical Iskai protagonist, he did have the thing happen where he accidentally started a town. Very, <laughs> very reminiscent of um, time I got reincarnated as a slime. And yes. I know there's at least one or two others, but I'm blanking. So, yeah. Yeah, so you're saying that the uh, John Brown farm up in upper New York is an uh, isekai location. Probably. Can we film an isekai there? Probably. We'd have okay. to get permission. Oh, I have costumes for that. Yeah, we do some. So, folks, <laughs> you know, I've been wanting to do a lot of uh, tours around the country with a humble collector and a few other friends where we go visit all these historic sites. Upper New York is one of them, more so because of Saratoga Battlefield and Fort William Henry. But, no sense saying we can't cut across country to go see the John Brown farm and film an isekai. So, <laughs> you know, keep supporting us and we may do that. Out. We're <laughs> we'll be like, these weebs. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, wasn't there a thing about weebs getting kicked out of a historical park? Oh, like, there are tons ago? of them. Yeah, I thought I remember reading, like, they damaged a wall somewhere. They or... were... They... I feel like Which Italia wall? cosplayers are very... I thought it was at, like, freaking Ticon or something. Italia cosplayers. No, Italia. That's what I said, not the fucking Italian. Oh, yeah. I thought you said the Italian. I'm like, no. <laughs> I hope the microphone got that, that effing bomb there. <laughs> I'm not proud of that fan base. Mm -mm. No disrespect there's, there's, to There's a lot of anime fan, fan bases that are yeah, gone. But, but if you're still one. in that fan base, why? Why? It's so old. Well, you know, so it's like there goes a whole well, over that. Now I just watch my subscriber count go down. <laughs> oh yeah, we're, no! we're yeah, from from the one Italia <laughs> fan, and we thank you your support, and please take everything. Which and just I'm joking. The next Honest question: I know vaguely what it's about. Never seen it. Is it any good? It's, I ha I own it. I kind of like it. I think it's funny. Spencer, your thoughts? Oh, I never actually watched the show, so I'm a grifter. It's a little cringe, but it's like. Well, put it on the list. It's, yeah, you, I think you'd like it, honestly. It's just the fan base. Because you're cringe, yeah. But I feel like there's a lot of good shows that have cringe fan bases. <laughs> Even going. <laughs> <Gilly. clears throat> My hero can you. <laughs> so, moving right along. <laughs> we'll get off track. Um, Spirits were as high as they could be despite the general poor conditions of this unnamed town. With a diverse population working towards one goal, that of freedom and liberty. The small town had even begun developing its own cottage industry. I just, I <laughs> thought I should emphasize cottage. I like cottages. Cottages are cool. That's yeah, cottages cool. are cool. Go, Italian fans, if you're upset with me right now for being a grifter, just, just go to a nice cottage, take a nice vacation. <laughs> you, you've deserved it. You've Such a it. roundabout. <laughs> that, that's my way of making amends. Hemp, cotton, and wool that had been acquired through raiding estates were used by those skilled in tailoring to produce goods for the people of the town. Outside of industry, some labored to establish new farms and fertile land near the cave. The ones who had experience in the dungeons grinded items for their comrades to use. Everyone had found a way to help the cause of abolition, no matter what form this help came in. Brown was back in his cave, observing the chalk map that he had drew. He had expanded with the help of some scouting parties he had sent in the meantime. No matter how many estates were crossed out, new ones kept being added as the map got bigger and bigger. It seemed like there was no end. Mr. Brown, why are you so intently staring at the map? Asked 
how do you pronounce her name? I Almighty. I Almighty, while she entered the cave. She had just returned from leading another raid. I think something is becoming very clear, young lady, said Brown. He pointed in the general direction of the still operating estates. To purge this land of its greatest sin, we have to burn all of these estates down, slowly, one by one, if we are to keep exactly to how we are operating. We are working efficiently, quietly, yet we're not working quite quickly. Is that a problem, Mr. Brown? We've already saved hundreds of people, replied I Almighty. Isn't that all we can do? Yes, I Almighty has a very sassy subconscious, by the way. Yes, she does. I, I quite like it. Yes. Yes, hundreds out of hundreds of thousands, continued Brown. We could hide away in these forests, perhaps for a year or two. In the end, whoever rules this land will come with an even bigger force to wipe us out. Another visitor came into the cave before Iamite could ask another question. He was a dark elf, two meters tall, with great white hair that rivaled even John Brown's. The elf brought along with him a stack of parchments. Mr. Nermo, welcome, said Brown, shaking hands of his visitor. He quickly introduced Mr. Nermal to Iamite, a former slave who John Brown had recruited as an interior minister of sorts. Brown monitored Nermal to leave the parchments on the desk that he had brought into the cave. Now, young lady, you shall see how we're going to defeat Goliath. On one of the parchments were the results of a census of the unnamed town's population, divided into those who could or could not fight. On another was an inventory of all weapons acquired from dungeons and estate raids. Finally, on the third parchment, there was a map of Gemon plots that came with notes about various settlements. Observing the data John Brown was collecting, I am mighty asked with a hint of fear and, cr and credulity. You're not planning on sieging down a town, are you? That's exactly what I'm planning to do, replied Brown. David didn't stand idle while Goliath fought him. We must be the ones to cast that first stone and be proactive. Who the hell is David? thought I Almighty. Aren't you putting everyone in jeopardy, Mr. Brown? What if we are defeated? I, I do love the fact that nobody knows the David and Goliath reference. <laughs> this poor You're man. Like, Brown's like, come on, man. No, you know my reference. I, I feel like that, that'd be the worst part of me, Isakai, right? Is you make these really funny references. That are really good. I would be able to communicate because I speak solely in references. <laughs> it's like, get the damn robot, Shinji. And everybody looks at you like, what's a You're robot? Like, Who's Shinji? That's just being on this channel, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's a similar experience. <laughs> we talk to my grandparents, and they're just like, huh? POV, you uh, Don't worry. I am uh, working on multiple videos. We got uh, uh, two artifact highlights, one of which is going to be the hall from our uh, from going to the Mac show in New York, uh, York PA. Mm -hmm. The other is going to be what happens when I stand on a tarmac for five hours. It was fun though, right? No, I don't like standing <laughs> on a tarmac for five hours. No, oh, I mean actually going into the planes. Yes, that was fun. Yeah, but I mean standing on the tarmac, I mean, it's cool. It's like warm. So we will get <laughs> yeah. more history-related content. So we're not, we're not abandoning the history. Well, you just released the East Cavalry Field video. Like That's true. But for now, more John Brown. Yes, but we are already in greater jeopardy while we stay idle. One cannot be free without being in some jeopardy, young lady, replied Brown. We must be a beacon in a sea of darkness, not a small firefly hidden in the forest. Our target will be the town of Farrer, from one has been reported. It's a town on the fringes with weak defenses and a high population of slaves. Brown handed Nermal a piece of parchment that had already been on the table. It contained drawings and orders for uniforms, flags, other textile goods, along with orders for a chemical formula that didn't make sense to Iamite. Connor, you seem uh, perplexed. Oh, no, no, I'm excited. I, <laughs> oh, oh. Because this, this is what, what I'd be doing. I'd be like, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to have these uniforms. I'm, I'm already designing standards. Like, oh, yeah. No. I was like, we're going to look great. Yeah, we're going to look really great. Even if we lose, we're going to look damn good doing it. <laughs> Sir, why the spikes? <laughs> fashion, baby. Yeah, fashion. <laughs> All right, I'm f okay. I've heard that the hardworking folks have already established their own workshops. We'll need 500 uniforms for the campaign, tents, etc. Also, if you can find anyone who can gather materials for and make the substance on the reverse, then send them directly to me. Are we thinking that's gunpowder? 
I'm interested. It just says on the reverse. Or, or is John Brown going to use mustard gas on the, the slave owners? Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, even want to know what he's going to do with poisonous gas. Probably some cheeky war crimes, I would have to imagine. Hell but, yeah. <laughs> it ain't a war crime if you win the war. And to be fair, there is no Geneva Convention in this world. That, that's true. And poison gas had not been banned yet at the time of uh, his hanging. So, yeah. really, this is all about war. Yeah. John Brown finally gave him another stack of parchment that he had been cut into a small rectangular notes that had John Brown's signature on them. Since we currently are lacking in hard cash, you should pay them with these promissory notes. We should have enough to pay them back after liquidating the assets of the town's nobility. Understood, Mr. Brown, said Nermal as he left the cave to carry out his new mission. The only ones left were John Brown and I might. You're really doing this, huh? said I Almighty. Though you're the only person I know that is mad enough to attempt something like this. I've said I am not all talk, but all action, replied John Brown. He turned back towards I Almighty. Now then, for this new army, the League of Gilida Gilidites, as it should be named. Yeah, that, that sounds good. You okay, Fat I Almighty? We're going with Gilidites. Oh, what, whatever. <laughs> I think you would make a suitable captain for one, if not two companies. In Jessica's self her yeah. promotion, <laughs> you've been promoted. Okay. You're gonna get to run. You're gonna get to run the uh, gauntlet from the arsenal down to the <laughs> halls. Rifle works. My la <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it. Yeah. Uh, uh, my last uh, second in command, uh, John Cag uh, Caggy. Uh, he he didn't make it. No, I am mighty's better than him. You already heard it first. I am mighty's better than Mr. Caggy. Yeah. All right, moving forward. So I, I would like to point out that. Uh, John Brown keeps making the, these motherfucking uh, biblical references, as you know. <laughs> He's a good Christian man. Uh, so yeah, uh, Gilead is the ancient historic biblical name for the mountainous northern part of the region of Transjordan, and is also the name of three people in the Hebrew Bible. Just, you know, in case you just want to throw that out there. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're, I'm, I'm glad I could derail the conversation. No, no, thank you, because I, I've probably offended so many groups, and we're not even to the half-hour mark. Uh, Look, if you're not offending people, you're not doing it right. Let's be real. Period. The month for the logistics for the Reformed League of Giladites proved to be a tough month. Provisions, cards to carry those provisions, people to make those cards, people to feed the people making the cards. Yeah, the, the cards, cards are very important. Well, logistics is... Logistics is how you win wars. It is. As uh, our... Yeah, it's not easy. As our uh, once... Our, let's just say our acquaintances to the East have uh, learned the hard way. Ooh, topical. <laughs> yeah, very topical. The town of Liberty Cave, a simple name that had become popular with the citizens, was a buzz as plowshares were beaten into swords. It's another biblical reference. The town like had it. somehow managed to cover the cost with a combination of promissory notes and voluntary work. Those who were participating in the League as a soldier spent the month training, learning how to march, maintaining formation, and of course practicing using these weapons. Soldiers without any particular calm experience were handed a pike- OH GOD! <laughs> that is, that, I got that reference. Which, so, explain, explain. Yeah, because I've been sitting here like with a dumb expression, and I'm like, cool. John Brown decided- well, first he- the people- the raiders that actually attacked Harpers Ferry were equipped with uh, Sharps rifles. The, since it's a breech-loading right, rifle, it would quicken their reload time. And they, I mean, there was only 20 of them. I mean, this guy's batshit insane. He, he's a maniac, uh, but a wonderful maniac, nevertheless. I mean, sure, go for it. Well, he decided, well, I can't get enough of these in time. So he's like, how... He, he thought he was afraid that the population of slaves that he were freeing, that many of them would not know the functions of firearm. So he thought the best solution would be bikes. Pikes. Thousands of pikes he ordered and stashed them in a schoolhouse several miles from the raid. Uh, the good news is for the raiders that were designated to protect those pikes, they were on the opposite side of the river while the raid was going to shit. <laughs> so they kind of were standing around for them, like, you know, maybe we're not going to get to use these pikes. Yeah, so... Were they, like, hearing all the fighting in Harper's Ferry? And going they probably on? would have. Yeah, they were about five miles, so they wouldn't be able to hear, the, you know, the gunshots. Down they would have been like, oh, this is a bit more than we were anticipating. They are like, damn, that's cringe. Did, so were they captured? They kind of dipped before. Oh, uh, they dipped. Yeah, okay. They I mean, some of, them would, some of them that did get out of Harper's Ferry would later be captured, but, yeah, they immediately dipped. What uh, what happened to the Pikes? That's a good question. I'm sure they're still floating around somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'd like one. Let's yeah. out. 
Anybody got that sweet John Brown, John Brown merch, the Pikes? Yeah, can I have a sweet John Brown Pike? Thank you very much. So, yeah, the Pike has always been one of my my wrinkles in my armor sometimes. If anybody ever mentions John Brown and Pikes, I just get a flashback, <laughs> a very vivid flashback to an event I was not a part of. <laughs> is, it, is it like a, I don't even know, is that like a pseudo-nom flashback or is that like a... I don't know. Those who were new, those who knew how to use bows and crossbows were handed what they already knew. Well, that's better. That's a little bit better than freaking pikes. Brown <laughs> felt right at home when he gained, again, took up the mantle of Captain Brown in this new army, commanding over ten times the men compared to his last raid on Earth. Mm, yeah, and twenty, yeah. 20, 20 brave souls. Joining him was Captain Iamite, who had gained great experience commanding men and women during her three month career as a revolutionary cat girl wizard. I said that in one breath. I'm very happy. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's a sentence that you would not have thought you were going to read before you this. No, <laughs> no, no. But we are here now. We are here now. Lastly, Nermo was attached to Captain Brown's army as a sort of aide de camp. He's probably going to be... He's, is he there as a volunteer? Or is he being... I guess he's a volunteer. He's a volunteer. Not. He's free, free slave. Um, though it is interesting, because up to this point, we've really only seen, like, demi-human slaves, but he's a dark elf, we found out. So that that's kind of new. That's different. Um, the League left the town with great jubilee from those who were left behind. Many waved goodbye to their family, made a kinship deeper than blood, for the last time as they marched forward to battle. The army marched quickly, Quietly, efficiently, just as Captain Brown liked it. They avoided open paths, traveled in fours as much as they could, and avoided settlements until they reached Faris. I'm probably mispronouncing it. So it's F A H R E. If it was me, I pronounce it Far. 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 Yeah. Far. Far. Well, guess what? Fancy. You, you are much more familiar with this elusive language of this. Uh, according, according to many people on my channel, I am horrible at pronouncing Russian place names, <laughs> so I don't know how... how this, much... this is not Russian. That's true. So, I think... Because I, mean... cause I, if I were to read it, like, I would say far, but fair just sounds better. So, I think we're going to hand off the reading honors to uh, Humble Collector over Oh, gosh, we're, we're additional. We're, we're last... I will still retain uh, John Brown, of course. So what, the last thing read was the, the fire, fire outskirts? Bingo. Uh, the town was quite close by, so they managed to reach it in three days and nights without a soul noticing the movement of 500 soldiers. Well, no soul noticed it until the lead began their siege of fire. Uh, the sapper teams quickly got to work, making makeshift fortifications while the rest of the army began setting up camp. The soldiers were already tired and disorganized from the day's long march. The assault was put off for the next day. The paths and gates leading out of the city were quickly cut off by the league. Their lines of communication and resupply were blocked off before the men of the town's garrison could notice that they were being besieged. Or it would have been fully blocked if the town still didn't have a fully functioning port along with some ferries. Oh, that's a problem. Uh, <laughs> still, having no land access was still a huge blow of the morale of the garrison of, of 100 that woke up to a whole besieging company or two on their doorstep. Great order, John Brown is. Great order, great speech giver. Maybe not the best tactician. Yeah. As I, we talked about the pikes. I, I understand... Um, that in this case, it's an isolated small town. I get why this was chosen as a siege target. But any town that you try to siege that you have a port that you don't have a navy to blockade the harbor as well, that's just asking for trouble. He needs some high friends in, uh, the, in the kingdom of France. Yes. Yeah, he needs the French fleet to show up and, uh, and you know, blockade the harbor. Um, upon seeing each other, both, side, both sides skirmish outside the city gates. Only a few were killed and injured in this initial skirmish. Uh, the garrison hid behind the stone walls of the town while the league hid behind a wall made out of uh, pavises. Sounds good. Yeah, pavises. Why not? I'm assuming... So, at this period, like, all of your battlefield vernacular comes from France for some reason. Like, chevaux de free. Mm -hmm. You know, Frisian horses. So, I, I'm just going to go with pavises. Because Pavise. everybody... Because the French had the engineers. They had all of the well-educated in the world. And all the countries like Britain are like, you know what? Let's just copy it. Because guess what? The Romans copied from other people and improved upon it, so that was the right. British mentality. Well, also, wasn't the French Manual of Arms the one that we used? Uh, for a while. For a while. Yes. Yeah. Because the French military was great. I mean, it was sort of. Yeah. Uh, well, it was Steu Von Steuben's uh, Blue Book. Yeah, that was... That was yeah. That was because even some people up to the American Civil War were still like clinging to it. Like, no, this is the, this is the way. <laughs> this is the way. This is the way. <laughs> 
Uh, a messenger came out of the city gates after both sides were tired of pelting each other to no avail. Uh, he was carrying a white flag as he rode toward Brown on his steed, uh, which was a giant bipedal lizard. Oh, hell yeah, lizard people. I, I like lizards. The lizard people are here. Yeah, did we... I don't know if it was mentioned in the previous chapters. I'm, I'm having trouble remembering. Are there horses, or are they mostly the, the bipedal lizards? I've noticed that lizard mounts are very popular in Isekai as well, for some reason. Because they're cool looking. Oh, they're cool looking, don't get me wrong. Especially since, like, two-legged, it conjures up pictures like a raptor, you know? They're probably slightly easier to animate than, like, an actual horse. That, yeah, that's fair, actually. It's a pretty too... sleek design. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know, my little pony does a good job. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a My Little Pony reference in the video. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> yeah. Got him! <laughs> hey, I, I love this. Uh, I, I love it. Bring more bring more randomness in here. Let's let's alienate it since the only people watching us are to free of us. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe our parents if we force them. <laughs> I forced them to listen to it while I was driving down Florida. Oh, I'm glad you did. Okay. They liked it. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, I got I to gotta figure, figure out a, a voice for this guy. Halt! You're intruding on the territory of Baron Harper Affair. Stop this band, and he'll forgive this grave crime that you're committing against him. If you don't, then he shall be forced to bring upon the might of this realm upon your puny rebel force. Uh, related messenger. Skeletor. Tell him that he is the one who is rebelling, and that he should cease his rebellion. <laughs> Brown just Uno reverse carded him. Uh, replied Brown. The messenger was shocked at the attitude of the old man, who looked to be a commoner and commanded an inferior force. If that baron does not stop his rebellion against the immutable laws of God, then we'll be forced to put down his rebellion in his name. We ask of him to accept the fact that all men are created equal. He shall let the slaves of God's domain be free, lest he face a most righteous wrath. That is definitely not possible and out of the question, said the messenger. Who does this old, decrepit man think he is? Then unfortunately... We have no more room for peace and negotiations, said Brown. The blood of the Baron and his men shall have to water the tree of liberty. Uh, the messenger rode back in disappointment to inform his liege. So, Mr. Brown, what is your plan now? Are we going to seize them while they call up reinforcements? Asked I Almighty, observing the messenger ride back. Brown was the kind of man who liked to practice secrecy with his plans, so she and the rest were left in the dark about the details. Question. Does he like secrecy in his plans because he doesn't trust people or because he's making the shit up as he goes along? That's that's a very good question, think... young man. <laughs> uh, he seems like a type of make it it. Up <laughs> I, I agree. He's like, hmm, okay. Yeah, hmm, Pikes, hmm, Harper's Ferry, hmm. Not going to escape when we have the town. <laughs> Got the weapons in the town, but we're going to wait. Yeah, <laughs> they will come. You steal the weapons, they will come. That's the... That was his philosophy. Yeah. I mean, if there was some crazy guy giving out free weapons, I mean, I'd, I'd probably show up. So, I would take him. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Depends what weapon are we talking about. I mean, if we're talking pikes. Look, man, if there's a crazy dude in town who's like, hey, I got free pikes for anybody that wants them, I'll be like, hell yeah, man, I'll take two. <laughs> I'd be lining up in disguises. You're stopping at two? Uh, honestly, I, I get a bunch, you know. I'd so like what type of disguises? Cosplay. Oh yeah, just could be cosplay. And I, I'd be like freaking. Um, I'd be like fake mustaching. I'd shave my beard. Um, so I, I, I'm going shots. to push forward. What disguises? <laughs> I want a breakdown. So the first would be just normal, right? Okay. So second, shave. Maybe get a haircut. Wear a different shirt, you know. You get a haircut. Ha maybe use an accent if I have to. Um, yeah, very good maybe my, my southern draw yeah. from the uh, uh, great land of Dixie. And then, um, you know, if I was moving forward, probably put a fake mustache back on. Maybe get a wig, you know. I got a few wigs. And honestly, after that, I'd probably just wear a really nice suit and get dressed up because I'd probably look completely different. With a cigar? No, with, no, with a cigar. With a no. face mask. That way nobody can see. <gasps> oh. That is always yeah. an option. But be, be holding it for the aesthetic. Yeah, hold the cigar. The cigar is that's, lit. The, that's what the you cigar mean. is lit, and I like move the mask aside, take a puff, to keep it going. No, you just, you just like do it through the mask. Oh, it, the face mask it has a hole in it, right? No, no, the cloth will just like. <laughs> oh, I'm smoking it through the cloth, just like. <laughs> yeah, that, that that works. That would be funny. Oh god, so that that's your plan. It's okay, very good. I get at least four that way. Yeah, that's true. Man. And that's three more perks I need. Yeah, I can give you you're, you're being more creative than I am. I can give you some dresses. You can go and drag. There you go. Yeah. 
But you, you two would get more pikes, though, if you both try disguises. You're trying to, like, throw it all on him. I got colored Car contacts. I got wigs. I got tape. I got makeup. I can do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'd get a lot of pikes, what we're, what we're saying. Yeah. Make a, make a... We're crafty. Yeah. So, folks, as a re reminder, we're at a point where Brown has besieged a town with a port. Maybe not the wise idea, because they're going to be able to get supplied. And I am Ivy's asking, what are we going to do now? And Brown's wonderful response is, no, we won't wait, replied Brown. He took out a super weapon that he had been carrying around in his knapsack. He originally tended this weapon to be gunpowder to blow open the walls, but he had been unable to find someone who knew what gunpowder was. Lacking gunpowder, Brown had to approach warfare from a different perspective. That perspective being that of psychological warfare. His oh. weapon for that was one that he had commonly seen on rallies. His simple megaphone. Yes! The skirmish around the wall had completely ceased. The garrison didn't bother shooting an unarmed man. So Brown was able to safely walk closer to the walls to unleash the weapons that win him the war. The enslaved folk of fire, we have come here to return to you your liberty and freedom. This beautiful country shall be yours only if you decide to seize it from those who have stolen it from you. Bring down the port and we'll do the rest. And I'm sure they're in there questioning, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> and... That's, that the, that's the, the end of the end. chapter. Yeah. Oh wait, we always get our night. Uh, we always get some very good um, historical context to make this an educational video. So, some extra historical context: the League of Gil 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 Gileadites. Uh, we're at the end of the chapter. <laughs> was a militia founded by John Brown to prevent the recapture of fugitive oh. slaves. The militia that was founded was cool. after Fugitive Slave Act was passed in 1850, where it was mandated in forties and free states states where slavery was banned, must have captured and returned fugitive slaves from the slave state. No person was captured back to slavery in Springfield after the founding militia. Oh, oh, so it's a real name. That's oh. pretty cool, though. I, I didn't oh, know that. I feel stupid now. Hey, hey, I did the video on the Harper's Ferry Raid. I well, and what's funny is you also did the video on the, um, the Underground Railroad in Monroeville, correct? Yeah. Yeah, which actually talked about where, you know, some slavers came up and tried to recapture a guy. And the oh, yeah, there's, there was multiple yeah. instances in Indiana County, Pennsylvania. Where the townspeople were just like, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was always more used to Brown, uh, his militant group being called the uh, Subterranean Passageway. <laughs> we said actually what it... It might not have been Passageway, but it was definitely Subterranean. So it's just a take on Underground Railroad? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, because the Underground Railroad, people that were like helping, like, yeah. from like the Underground Railroad, like, we don't want to, like... Be associated with you? Be shooting at people, and then he's just like, "Fine, I'm gonna fine. Go. I won't be the Underground Railroad." I'll there's be, a there's I'll a fame the there's <laughs> a, the yeah. There's the fame photo of Brown like in the eight or I think it's like early 1850s. He's not doesn't have the beard yet. Yeah, uh, and he has his hand raised like over the Bible and stuff. In the background, there's this very awkward curled up thing. That's actually his flag for the subterranean passageway. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that photo. He, are you going to put a picture of it up on screen? Oh, absolutely. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's up there it. right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you didn't even you didn't even comment on the meme here either. Oh, That's dear slave owners, you <laughs> say you like being alive, yet you're invoked my wrath. Curious. John Brown, Turning Point Abolition. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like the Turning Point memes. That's a good format. That's... All right, that's the, the end of the chapter. So um, now this is the part where we go completely off the rails. There is no script anymore. We are all doomed. Is the town of Fer going to be relieved from the sea? Probably. There's more chapters. There's there's three more chapters. Um, well, here, here's what I think is going to happen, right? Slaves going to revolt, right? Well, yeah. That's oh, obviously, that's going to happen. But is the town garrison going to escape by boat? Like, are they going to have this exodus to the sea where they go to the capital and be like, hey, this thing happened. It's really not good for us. That very good, very good prediction. Yeah. Hmm. Why, why did John Brown choose a port town? I understand that that's a thing he would do, but, like... Well, I know he says pretty isolated. It's isolated. Well, that's why he picked it. It's he isolated. Nice it's small. View. Small scale. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a yeah, nice that, that beachfront property, Bam. mega bucks that's for That's why I would make the decision. I'd be yeah. like, yeah, I like the sunset on the, on the water. Yeah. Well... Well, he's following the footsteps of the alphabet. He's like, I'm going to take over the seaport, you know, like have that good sea view. <laughs> yep. 
Look, that ocean front view, man. It's, it's worth it. You, you can fight a revolution with that. Okay. Nothing worth dying for like a beachfront timeshare. No, you're not wrong. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I love me a good timeshare. <laughs> Everybody loves a good timeshare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so th this, is, this is what we do in our free time, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just love the fact that he, he'd already designed the uniforms. Because here's the thing. When, when you're formatting a rebellion, generally, like, I don't know. The uniforms kind of come, like, second place, at least in my mind. Like, you, you want to, like, accomplish some goals before well, you, like, maybe get your uniform. I would put, there. personally, I'd put them in that Adam Sandler wear, what I'm wearing right now, which is basketball shorts and a t-shirt. So it's, it's easy to move in, breathe, breathable, you're good. That's great until you're moving through the brush. I, now, the, so the question is... just ignore is, it. That's I, what so I do. <laughs> we're, we're assuming based off the cover, because we have I Am Mighty in a pseudo-union kind of uniform. That's going to be the uniform. Right? But... Would John Brown pick that as his uniform? That's a good question. Because, you know, John Brown did lead an insurrection against the technically... I must admit, I don't know if he had plans of a proposed uniform for his provisional government. Again, if it was me, I probably would have thought of that pretty early on. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I would already There's always the old school trick of putting cards in your hands. Well, what's that reference to? I don't, I don't... Um, Texas Revolution. Well, I mean, several wars where they would... You know, the designate friend from foe put like a card or like a. Oh, so similar to wearing like a colored armband. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I believe, I believe that's what they did at uh, the Battle of San Jacinto. Um, Houston had them put cards in their hats, like to make sure so, that they're not shooting at each other. So, question when we get to like the World War II, Korea, Vietnam time frame where people are still slipping playing cards into their, their helmets, is that like a continued legacy from that, or is that completely different at that point? Because I'm assuming at that point it's more like a morale, like I think it's more of a morale thing, thing. But I think like, it began as a practicality sense, and then the people were like, "Oh, we can uh, we can make our thing individualistic. Oh, we can uh, sporty thing." So it just took yeah. off. Customize the avatar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to look like all the other generic foot soldiers. I'm not I've, like got, I've got an ace of spades. I'm not like other foot soldiers. <laughs> hey, John, what do you have in your hat? I got an ace of spades. Damn it. <laughs> Gotta rework that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what started the novelty playing card industry in the United States. It's like everybody <laughs> wanted different cards, right? So you had to design all these different decks. Yeah, uh, yeah there, there might be something there. Yeah. I, I, I really, we need a, um, a historian who specializes in the development of playing cards to, to China. Sure, there's one. There's at least one. There's someone out there. Yep. Playing cards. And I we, very we, much we, we met we met a very nice gentleman at uh, the Mac show today who was very fascinated with um, variants and subvariants of Car ninety eight K or Car basically Mauser ammo pouches, um, which was a fascinating conversation. Because uh, apparently there's like hundreds of variants, which I did not know. Um, so that that was pretty cool. Wow. And I'm the death card guy, so I guess I, I, I'm one to talk. You're a card guy. I am a card he guy. Is a, he, he is a dealer in cards. You got these really nice business cards. I do. Yes, he does, too. Got, they're, they're, they're red and textured and... Good good stuff. Yep. Making, yeah, uh, I got some really cool business cards. Over you here. do, yeah, too? Yeah. No, no, these are just ones oh, I picked yeah, Different booths. Well, the yeah. one guy, his business cards were actually shaped like a like a metal ribbon. Like that was some cool shit. Oh my like, gosh! Yeah. One was even getting out like stickers, patches. Everything. Yeah, that, that was the guy. Like his his cards yeah, were like cool. ribbons and like yeah. Yeah, a little tip to the masses: business cards work. Yeah, they do, especially if they're well designed. Nice. I see you got uh, the uh, the photo card there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like his card design a lot actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I might be contacted. Look at that font. Him. Oh, his his website's great. Yeah, I I may need some photos from him. Well, yeah. I want photos from him. I don't sign, sign, up for his, sign up for his update list. My problem is he always, like, he'll send out an email the morning he's going to post an update, right? But the update goes up at, like, 3 or 4 when I'm in work, and I don't have access to my phone or my email. So I'll get out to my car, and I'll see I have two emails from his website. I'll be like, crap, I missed the update. Um, if you pay me, I'll do it for you. We'll, we'll, we'll talk later. Okay. Right, right after that. <laughs> we'll talk to that. More money. Well, I'm going to take advantage of maybe having this process a little bit quicker. Uh, we're at about the 44-minute mark. Anybody have any final words, comments, messages? I, I'm very much looking forward to the siege tactics. That uh, Oh, yeah. Well, granted, I, it seems like he's used the megaphone. Slaves are going to revolt. People are going to flee the sea. That's what I'm assuming is happening. So I'm curious what's going to happen. What's actually going to happen? Because I'm usually wrong. So Very wrong. 
Yeah. I'm just here for a good time. That that that's that that's okay. That's fair. <laughs> that's what most people are here for. Yeah, we're here for. A if good you're time still watching time. at this point in the video, you're just here for the laughs. You, everybody else is uh, taking their ball and going home. <laughs> yeah. They're like, ah, oh, this East Guy shit. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, not a real history video. Well, there, there is some real history in these videos. There is. Like, that that's the thing. Like, if you stick around through the memes and the isekai, there is some genuine history here. And yeah, our brain will start working subconsciously. I know that because yeah. I didn't know any of them. But the thing is, like, Cabbage Preacher very much put that too, thought yeah. into the story, and there's so many historical references you will miss if you're not paying attention. Like the goddamn pikes. <laughs> exactly. And that that's just quality. That, that's good story writing. You, you like to see it, it's good. Yeah. All right. So. All right. Well, we will see everybody in the next video of the John Brown Isekai. So that's that. Um, anybody, again, any final comments, words, sign offs? No, I guess, uh, you know, check out, um, you know, Readout Productions and Humble Collector. Check and... out Humble Collector. <laughs> Don't check me out. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> you didn't even put your username out there, so they, they nah, can't. No, I don't. Some 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 crazy person. Somebody's gonna recognize your voice. It's gonna all get connected. I hope not. It's, it's, it's have you heard of Reddit? <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be like a, solved in ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, those were Danias. Later, skaters. Yep.